year seven to your summer project. 2020 has been a year of seismic change for the world and seismic is a word that means enormous or life changing. This summer we want you to explore how far life has changed and why these changes have taken place. Now this particular PowerPoint is only going to focus on one of four questions. We would like you to construct a piece of research based on one of four titles. These titles are select two trending hashtags from to across 2020 and compare their impact on global society. 2020 has been a light year of seismic change. Which change do you think has been the most significant and why? What has been the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the global environment? And this PowerPoint is going to talk about the final question, which is how has the influence of the monarchy changed in 2020? You only need to complete one of those four titles and after you've watched this PowerPoint, have a look through the other ones and choose from them which you think will be the best to get your teeth into. So now we're going to break down the question together. How has the influence of the monarchy changed in 2020? The term influence means the power to have an effect on people or things. So a big influence means a lot of power and a big impact on something, whereas a smaller influence means not much control over something or people. The monarchy relates to the royal family of a country. A monarch is the leader and they usually rule until they die or abdicate. Abdicate means leave the throne. This is normally hereditary, so you normally become the monarch if your parents are the monarch before you. Our monarch is Elizabeth I and the monarchy is her family. When talking about change, which is a significant proportion of this question, we need to talk about how things have changed over time. So to do that, we need to discuss what's come before and how these things have occurred in order to change and cause differences when compared to now. So when we are looking at how has the influence of the monarchy changed in 2020, we need to look at what the influence of the monarchy was and what has happened to change that overall influence. So now we can get started on our research. And the most important part of researching is the collection of the information. So you can do this in any format you want. You might find it best to do a mind map to get your notes organised. You might like to make simple bullet points or lists or you might like to use subheadings to separate your research so it's clear when you come to present. You can start by looking at some of these key questions around the overall title. What is the role of the monarchy in the UK? So what jobs do they have and what responsibilities do they have? What was the influence of the monarchy before 2020? Because remember, we need to focus on the idea of change from before. What happened in 2020? And this is quite a wide ranging one, so you need to be able to cut down the evidence into small little pieces. What impact might these events have had on the UK? How did the monarchy respond? What impact, if any, did the monarchy have and why? And do the UK need a monarch in 2020? Collecting information around these key questions and some of your own are going to set you up for your presentation, which we will talk about next. We are very lucky in our society that we have access to a lot of different types of information. When we are doing this question, sources of information we can look into are as follows. So we can start with Google and some of those key questions popped into Google will give you a myriad of results that you can scan through. Now, some of these results are going to be very, very beneficial, but there may be a couple that you question. And if you are unsure whether the information is correct, simply research into it a little bit more. The second uh, source of information you can use is a library. So libraries contain not only old books, but very, very recent ones as well. And if there is a piece of information you can't find in there, librarians and researchers will definitely help you to get that information. So do ask where possible. Magazines are very underrated in how useful they are, but magazines give us people's perspectives, their interpretations of events. So a lot of people write columns for magazines and within those you can see their perspective. Similarly, when we're looking at the monarchy, you can look at how magazines present the monarchy. And within that, you'll find lots of information about Kit and Meghan Markle. 
so that could be very useful as well. The radio often has broadcasts that are directly linked to politics and the ideas around politics, particularly on the BBC. So it's worth having a listen to those. I know you can get podcasts on your phone through this. Newspapers provide very up to date information posted the day before, which will be really beneficial in seeing some of those up to date opinions. And finally, word of mouth. You are researching a question on the monarchy and therefore people's perceptions of the monarchy, their views and understanding of what the monarchy does is just as important as some of that research um, that's quite official. So do have a look around, speak to the people around you and get their views when you are conducting your research. Now we get to the exciting bit, ways in which you could present your research. And this really is your research, your piece of work. So it does fall to you to decide how you want to present that to school. You could do it through an information board, a display board with lots of key information on it, lots of the different pieces of um, views and opinions you have picked up. You could do it through an infographic, which you'll see just in the middle of the page here. An infographic uh, combines both images and research together. It's very eye catching. It's very modern and up to date. And you will have seen them uh, placed all over school as well. You could do it as a news report. So news reports can be either biased, so have one viewpoint or they can be multi viewed. So that would be um, something to explore. You could do it as a school report, as a voice report, just like this in which you conduct your research and you present that. You could even do it as a piece of artwork or a model if you feel like that would be sufficient enough to get the points across that you need making. There are endless ways in which you could present your research. All you need to do is ensure that the key points are there, that the content is strong and that your overall arching opinion on the question is very clear. The rest is up to you how will your project be marked? Now you'll have put a lot of effort into this project. You should be looking at between eight and ten hours to give us a fully formed project and you can pick up marks for many different criteria because we know how much time and work you'll put into this. So effort is the first one. The more effort you put in the more points you will receive. That one's pretty clear cut. Content is the second criteria and that links to the depth you've gone into. So how much information you've gathered and how much you've separated that out and made it clear and looked at all the different sides of the coin, all the different opinions on the question. And finally, creativity. So we were talking about the ways in which you can present your research and this is where you can really, really shine. So maybe you've created this fantastic model that highlights all the important opinions. You're going to pick up marks for your crea creativity around that too. On the next slide, you'll find the prizes that are up for grabs after submission. Now, every student who enters will get 25 credits. So think about that and the impact that can have. It's going to get you towards that first certificate. And at the end of this, you're going to have something very, very valuable moving forward. You're going to have a piece of constructed research that shows your ability to everybody who sees it. So with that said, I hope you all enjoy this taking part in the summer project and that it fills a bit of that time. If you have any questions, forward on to your school. Hope you have a lovely summer and work very hard. We have got some incredibly exciting summer homework projects planned for you guys. So there are two projects available for each year group, one under the heading of STEM and the other a year of seismic change. It's really important that you answer one question from each of these projects. When you go onto our website and have a look at some of these questions, you will find they are incredibly interesting and provide you with an opportunity to research and create some fantastic project ideas. You will be wondering how your projects will be marked. So in September, form tutors will mark each project based on the following criteria, effort, content and creativity. They will award a grade one to four in each category with one being outstanding. Just wanna give you a few top tips on how you can achieve an outstanding grading in each of these. It's really important that as part of your research, that you do for each of these projects that you show that you have gone above and beyond. Present your work in a creative and unique way to catch the attention of your audience and think about the content that you include within each project. It's really important that the content that you include answers the question that has been set to you. 
for every grade one you achieve, your name will be entered into a prize draw. There's a separate prize draw for each category, effort, content and creativity. And if you get a grade one in all three, you will, be, you will have the chance to enter a fourth prize draw. So to the best bit then, how will you be rewarded? So for completing each project, you will receive 25 credits from your form tutor. So 25 credits for the STEM project and 25 credits for completing a year of seismic change project. So in total, by completing these two projects, you will be eligible for 50 credits come September, that is equivalent to a bronze certificate. In addition to the 50 credits, there's a fantastic opportunity here for you to win an Apple iPad. Now, there are four prize draws available to you, depending on the grading you secure on effort, content and creativity. If your form tutor awards you with a grade one, for any of the three categories, your name will be entered into the prize draw for these. Additionally, if you achieve a grade one in effort, content and creativity, all three criteria, your name will be entered into a fourth prize draw as well, increasing your chances of winning a, um, an iPad. Both projects will be marked separately, therefore there is an opportunity here for your name to be entered eight different times. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact your academy by the info at email address. We are incredibly excited about these projects and cannot wait to see the work that you produce. And most importantly, we can't wait to welcome you back in September.